Today we're going to look at the top 10 last minute things that you should do uh, at the beginning of an SHTF situation. I remember when COVID first hit with the lockdowns, with people in the hospital, people sick, you know, mask being worn. I mean, it came out of left field and it was something that most people had never even thought about. Uh, guys, we've been prepping for years, but I don't care who you are. There's always holes in your prep. And two, there are situations that are just totally different than what you plan for. But we're going to take a look at 10 different things to kind of get you on track. One of the important things is to have a plan. It'll take a lot of the fear and panic out of what you're going to do next. Now, the first thing you want to do is to get in touch with your family and friends and make sure that you get everyone home into one location. If you have kids at school, you know, if you're at work, how are you going to get home? You know, one of the things that can happen is you can have a vehicle, we can have gas, we could even have cell service. Again, there are so many different type threats, but you need to be ready for, the, for all of them. Now, one of the big things about that, if you do lose communications, if you aren't able to use a vehicle, is to have that location for everyone to rally around uh, because you don't want everybody scattered and they're lost, uh, and so you want to have everybody together. But first thing is, you want to get your kids from school. And if you're married or you have a significant other, you want to make sure you get her and get yourself home and get yourself secure. All right, number two is if your plan is to bug out, let's say the area you're in, there's no way that you can remain there. You need to go ahead and start getting your car packed, make sure that you have the supplies you need, make sure you have gas in your vehicle. Uh, extra gas cans always come in handy. Having some water uh, in a container. Uh, getting those things together. We just did a video about vehicle bug out and there's some ideas there that you might have for that short-term bug out. Uh, but making sure that you get everything packed away and get it ready to go. Make sure you have a map where you can get to A to B location and also have alternate routes set up. One thing that can happen is we can lose cell service, uh, whether it's an EMP or actually the cell service has been turned off or damaged. And so it's important to go ahead and have that physical map to be able to get you where you're going. But you've got to have all your supplies together, ready to go, then pack it up in your vehicle. And then honestly, if you're going to bug out, you need to do that sooner than later. The later you wait, the more trouble and panic that's going to happen all around. Now, if you're on prescription medication, that is definitely a priority. And you want to make sure that you have some already set aside. But if it's possible, get to the pharmacy, go ahead and get the medications you need, get those prescriptions refilled. Um, and that's just going to help you long term. One of the things about an SHTF situation is it could be short term or long term, but you want to give yourself the best chance possible. But just picking up basic supplies, uh, you can go to the grocery store, especially up front, and be able to pick up different items that you need. Uh, of course, canned meats, dried beans, things that are going to really last long term. You want to stay away from items that need to go in the refrigerator as much as possible. Again, it's according to the situation. Of course, one of the funny things is when a snowstorm comes, everybody runs out and gets milk and bread. <laughs> and those are two things that just don't keep that well. But also you want to pick up matches, lighters, you want to pick up hand sanitizer because we need to keep ourselves clean. You want to pick up extra batteries. Uh, the type things that are disposable that you really could use uh, because they finally just run out. Uh, even Kleenex, toilet paper, paper towels, paper plates for that matter. But find the areas that you need to fill and make sure you have that on the list so when you go to a grocery store you know, you may be under pressure to grab the things you need with other people trying to grab those same items. And so if you have a list and you can run to the store and pick that up, it's just going to put you ahead. Number five is water. Uh, making sure that you have your containers filled. Uh, if you have any kind of containers where you can put water in them, go ahead and fill them up. If you have a water bob to put in your tub, go ahead and fill that up. And that gives you good potable water. Uh, if you don't have a water bob, fill up your tub anyway. We used to have a well that was on electricity, and so when the power went out, we had no water. And so if a storm was coming in, we would fill up our bathtub, and it would just give us that water if we needed to flush the toilet or use it for different things. Um, and also make sure you have your water filters set aside, they're ready, they're in good shape. If you have rain catchment systems, get out there and clean them, make sure that they stay maintained. And then if you have a well, you can go ahead and again fill up containers from it. 
but make sure you have a good supply of water. Uh, in the rule of threes, you can only live three days without water before you really start to get dehydrated. And honestly, that is one of the most important things you can do is have water. Now, if you have a generator, get it out, test it, make sure it's running, make sure you have fuel for it, uh, whether it's gasoline or propane. If you have a big home generator, a lot of times it runs on propane. Make sure that you have full tanks. If you have solar power of any sort, whether it's a solar generator or just a little solar panel to charge a battery, get those out in the sun and let them start charging immediately. Even if there's not really a threat of a power outage, it's great to have all those things ready to go. Uh, if you have a gas grill, again, you want to make sure you have extra propane stored up. And propane is very stable, and I really like propane as an option. Uh, but you could also have different type stoves and with butane or different things. And you want to make sure that you have those supplies and make sure you have them out and ready to go. Make sure you have your batteries. Make sure your phone's charged. Uh, make sure that flashlights that are rechargeable that are also fully charged. Now, if the power does go out, make sure you have a lot of blankets set aside to wrap around your freezer. It's just going to help keep that cool, keep it insulated longer, uh, and then also even with your refrigerator, because once you lose power and it starts to get warm, you're going to have to be ready to cook that food, and that's also something to consider. Are you going to be able to cook a massive amount of food and be able to even preserve it if possible? Uh, having coolers set aside to be able to fill up, taking the ice that's in your freezer, go ahead and dump it in a cooler and put some of the extra items in there that you need to. Uh, you can also get the hard pack ice packs to be able to put in there, put them in your freezer and, and get those ready. And I would have extra ice and extra uh, cold packs ready to go in case the power goes out. But now if it's in the middle of winter and the temperatures are really low, you could actually store some of your food outside. You want to put it in containers though because you don't want animals to get into it. Uh, but that is one possibility if you live in a very cold climate. Now we just recently bought a freezer and if the power goes out, it actually will seal together and it'll really hold tight. And so it'll actually last longer. And so if you're looking for a freezer, you may want to look for that option. Now in the winter time, you want to make sure you have your blankets set aside, sleeping bags, different things that you can sleep in. Make sure you have your cold winter clothes ready, your jackets, extra socks, things like that. If you have a wood stove, you want to make sure that you have wood set aside and ready to go. And go ahead, if you don't have a good supply, is to put that supply together. And one thing you want to do is to be able to seal off one room. If the power goes out and your heat goes out, then you want to get into a small area as possible. Uh, and you can use blankets up around it, or you can get into a smaller room and try to keep that as warm as you can. There's a lot of options that you can use inside. One thing that we use is the heater buddy, and it needs propane. And so we can have that set aside. We can have, actually have it inside the house. Uh, but we do have the window open just a little bit to give it a little bit of a vent. A lot of the heaters, though, that are out there will produce a lot of carbon monoxide. So you need to be careful and check your heater sources to make sure that you don't poison you and your family during the night. When it's summertime, you want to make sure you're staying hydrated. So drink plenty of liquids, uh, but also you can take wet sheets, just damp sheets, put them up in the windows, and as the wind blows, it'll blow cooler air into the house. With the temperatures that we've had this summer, it's very important that you stay cool. Number nine is medications. Uh, making sure that you have the over-the-counter type medications that you need. Um, and that could be Advil, Tylenol, Imodium, Pepto-Bismol, antacids, things like that. But also bandages uh, and different items. If you get cut, you make sure you have some antibiotic ointment. Uh, and also have your trauma kits ready. Uh, have them set aside, know where they are, know how to use them. And that's one thing that you need to plan ahead of time. But having all your medical supplies out and together and ready to go. Uh, there, a lot of times, you know, especially in a grid down situation, diseases can flare up and different pandemics or epidemics. And so you want to make sure you keep your hands clean. So keeping some soap, keeping your, your hand sanitizers, those type of things, and keep yourself clean. It's very important that you take hygiene and make that a priority. Throughout history, when we didn't understand about germs, disease, dysentery, those type things killed more people than actual bullets. And so health is a priority. Keeping sanitized clean, keep yourself clean, keep your uh, kitchens clean, 
and it'll also keep down with pests and rodents and things like that. It can come in and destroy some of your food preps. Number 10 is implement your security plan. Make sure that you're watching. Make sure that you have situational awareness. You see what's going on all around you. Uh, and that is very important. Uh, you, cameras may still be working. Your security systems may still be working. It's according to if we have power or not. Uh, one thing you can do is to take your vehicles and block off an area. Barricade your doors if things are tending to get violent. Barricade the windows. Uh, have somebody to watch. Make sure you have some binoculars. Uh, if you can get night vision, I mean, there's some very reasonable options for night vision uh, that you can use, and it just gives you a superpower. Make sure that you have your flashlights ready to go, extra batteries, or have those lights charged with solar chargers as well. Um, make sure that you have your firearms clean, maintained, ready to go, magazines loaded, extra magazines available. Also, load-bearing equipment, you know, whether you have holsters and mag pouches or even a plate carrier with mag pouches across it uh, because you want to be able to carry those extra magazines if you need to. But again, it's important to keep watch of what's going on. If there is power, you can tune into your local news and see what's going on around and to see if there are any type areas that are dangerous uh, and see what's going on around in your area. And guys, obviously security can really expand into a lot of things and you need to have some kind of security plan set for you and your family if you have a grid down situation. But also you can use blackout curtains. Uh, if you have light and no one else does, you're gonna really stand out. So make sure that you can put something up in your windows to be able to use light, use it sparingly if possible. Um, and also make sure that if you have items laying around outside that people may steal, make sure you take those and secure them. And again, have a rallying point for your family. If things go wrong, you can get to that rallying point and you're not lost. So again, guys, there are 10 things that are very important uh, that you need to do right during the beginning of an SHTF situation. Uh, you can use this as an outline, but guys, make a plan. Put something together and it'll give you real peace of mind if something does go down. It gives you a list just to be able to go down and it kind of calms the panic down a little bit and it gets you ready and it'll give you more of a chance to survive any kind of grid down SHTF situation um, and it'll just give you a step ahead. Guys, when it comes to fire, it is essential to survival and having a good fire kit and knowing how to use it is vital for survival situations. And Exotac makes the best fire starters on the market. Made in the USA, down in Winder, Georgia, using really high grade aluminum, they machine some really beautiful handles, a lot of different features, replaceable ferro rods, and a number of other different fire starting tools. You get 20% off using Suits 20 with the link down below in the description. And a big thank you to Exotac for sponsoring today's video. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Uh, and you have a bug out plan, you have a bug, bug, bug out, you have a bug out. Guys, when it comes to prepping, Guys, did it? Okay. Yeah, I remember when COVID hit, and we knew that there were the lock. Okay, we knew that there were the lock. We knew that there were the lock. Those threats can manifest themselves in a number of different ways. Manifest into like a manifest, manifest, manifest. I don't know. So you need to be ready to improvise. You need to be ready to, for a number of different situations. And you know you were concerned because you were going to be in one area. I mean, whether it was your home or with whatever or whatever 